Hello guys, welcome back to Sister Summer. Today is Friday. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Before I start this vlog, I wanted to um, just kind of like say something really quickly because today and yesterday and the day before, all this week, all this month, honestly, um, there has been so much just honestly fucked up sad shit that has been going on in our world. As I'm sure all of you guys are aware. Well, in our country specifically, but... I mean in our world and I'm sure most of you guys share in my sadness and just how like heartbreaking and unfair and disgusting what's going on in our country is I just want to give my respect and my thoughts and my prayers and my hope for change to you know whoever is affected by this it's been hard because I feel like so much of us just feel like what can we do you know what I mean that's basically what I feel like I just feel like you know, we hear about these terrible, disgusting things that happen, like, almost every single day now. Like, this week, every single day, there's basically been a shooting that we've heard about of an innocent person. The world feels pretty fucked up right now and pretty sad, and um, it's heartbreaking and disgusting. We need extreme change in this country, and I really, really, really do, from the bottom of my heart, hope that we can positively come from all of this tragedy that has happened lately i hope we can come out of it stronger and with better fucking laws and with better just everything i hope we can stand together with a lot more love because i feel like all of this happening all of this violence that we hear about happening and this unfair disgusting stuff and these shootings hearing about it and people just getting you know angry and upset and saddened by it is creating more violence and it's just a really scary time right now and um, I hope that you guys are doing okay and trying to look on the positive change side of things I really really do hope that we can make a huge positive change this year and as soon as possible honestly and I would love to start a discussion in the comments um, because I feel like I'm not the only one wondering this right now, but what is the most effective way for me and for you guys as citizens to be able to help with, I guess, the power that we have? I want to know what the fuck can I do besides sending my thoughts and my prayers because everybody is doing that and there ha there has to be more that we can do so besides just talking about it and making people aware and you know trying to change people's closed minds about racism and sexism and everything else that is going on in our country so i am also uh on a bunch of caffeine right now i got a venti cold brew so i feel like i'm talking kind of like Ugh. so excuse my <laughs> my craziness that was a really long intro just wanted to say that and um let's start the vlog now so um today all i have really done is slept in took a shower and then i went to grab some cupcakes and some coffee today's my last day in georgia um i don't really have too much planned i am going out tonight with to buckhead with uh, a lot of my friends so they're gonna come over at blah, blah, blah. sorry i'm talking like on coffee i do feel pretty messed up right now from this fucking cold brew um my friends are gonna come over a group of probably like 10 12 15 and a few hours and we're going to just like pregame here and then we're going to uber to buckhead and go to the bars so that'll be fun because i haven't done that since like may and it will be a good last night i want to get my suitcase all packed up before i do that though so i'm going to go ahead and start getting ready but um i don't have much time to vlog today because I have a lot to do like like I said I have to pack and then my friends are coming over and then we're going out so I wanted to do a Q&A for the vlog today so it's not just like me sitting around like I did on the 4th of July when I just like get ready and then I just like stop vlogging and I go so I tweeted on Twitter and asked you guys for any questions that you had so I'm going to look at those and answer some now because I love doing little Q&A's catching up with you guys on everything so it's Q&A time, baby. Lighting kind of sucks because all the light comes in from my windows, which are behind me, but it's fine. <laughs> um, check out my pink and zebra sheet set. Okay, if you guys have watched my main channel videos since I was like 15 or 16, 
uh, my entire room and comforter and room and life was pink and zebra and that's what these are from so these are such a freaking throwback honestly like do you guys remember when zebra was the biggest deal of life <laughs> okay so I want to answer you guys questions so um, and I'm so hype off of my coffee right now so excuse if I'm talking like really fast or like I'm just crazy the first question is, if you knew you were only going to live for five more years, would you change anything about your life? So I don't know if she means would I change anything about my life in the past or would I change anything about my life since I'm only going to live, like now, since I'm only going to live for five more years. Um, I wouldn't change anything around the past because there's just no point in like focusing on things from the past because it all led you to like this moment would i change things about my life now um yes if i if i knew i was only gonna live five more years i think i would just be really really like strategically smart about the next five years i would do everything that i want to do in this life i would probably just travel for the next five years and just see amazing things and meet incredible incredible people and learn everything that i can learn in this life in the next five years so I would make changes for the better if I knew I was only going to live for five more years. Cool question. Um, Margot says, the most important question of life, which is better, salsa or guac? My personal preference is always guacamole. I do enjoy chips and salsa a lot. If I have good guacamole, I am so happy. Like guacamole, I think, is my favorite food just to eat like... At, at any time <laughs> at any time honestly this question is from jasmine and she says what is the best way to keep a positive mind when you aren't feeling positive within yourself everyone's gonna feel down at times everyone's gonna not be feeling like super confident at all times so it's very normal to feel this way um but i think it's also important to know everything right now is like supposed to be happening um, and just to trust that everything is just leading you to the better things. I mean, my tattoo kind of simplifies how I feel about things in life and it says I believe in the good things coming and I get so freaking happy every time that I see this and I remember that I have this on my skin. Same with my I am happy. I didn't mean to bring up my tattoos, but these are positive reminders for me that I see every single day and remind me even if I am sad, which I get sad. I get sad about things within myself and that's completely, completely normal. But you have to just know that everything um, is leading you to the better things and it can be hard to stay positive, especially when all this fucked up shit is going on in the world like it is now. But um, I think it's very important because if you don't stay positive, it's just kind of like a negative, a negative cycle that's not going to benefit anyone it's not going to benefit you it's not going to benefit anyone you're around so i don't know if i'm even making sense right now i hope i answered the question <laughs> i don't know oh i like this question um matthew says if you could relive one show you've been to what would you choose i don't know if i've ever thought about that i think i know i think i would um relive my second bass nectar new year's eve show i've been to three um, he does a show for New Year's Eve every year, pretty much. I'm praying to God it'll happen again this year. But um, the second year that I went to, I think the, fir the first year was my first Nectar show. Um, but I would relive the second one because that was... <sighs> I think that show was the most like spiritual experience of my entire life thus far. Um, if not one of the most. And because when you're in that room, I can't, you can't understand what I'm saying unless you've like been in what I'm talking about. That sounds like eh, so annoying, but like it's true. Um, literally, you're just surrounded by complete, just so much energy, really just like raining down in the room, it feels like. That night, so much happened for me, and I think just, um, it was I can't I can't really explain it. I would just choose to relive that show. And if um any of you guys are looking for something fun to do on New Year's Eve, because I personally never had a amazing New Year's Eve until I started going to this show every year and now 
oh my god i would never spend my new year's doing anything else if this show was happening even if you didn't do the show i would still go to a show on new year's eve somewhere because i think it's so much more fun than just like going out and getting drunk as fuck and like just going out and being with like a huge crowd because everyone's gonna i'm talking so much with my hands everyone's gonna be out on new year's eve so you guys should go to the show it was in birmingham last year in alabama um, and it was in Nashville, Tennessee before that. I'm not sure where it will be this year, but I will be there. I'm feeling turned right now. Like, I'm, I should not finish the rest of this. Holy shit. I'm about to, like, pack so hard my suitcase. I'm just gonna be like, pew, 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 after I'm done with this Q&A. Lexi says, will you ever come to Italy? I'd really love to meet you. I discovered YouTube because of you. Um, I have come to Italy. I will come again for sure. Italy is incredible. Um, I went to Lake Como. I went to Venice. I went to Rome. I think that's all that I went to. I was in like Milan for, no, I wasn't really in Milan. I was at the train station in Milan. But um, Italy was freaking awesome. So, so incredibly gorgeous and fun. So I will definitely be returning to Italy. And if I do return to Italy, I will have to um, have a meetup. Obviously, Italy is fucking huge. But um, I will return to Italy, so don't you worry, Lexi. I've been getting this question on social media a lot. Um, are you going to Lollapalooza this year? And she says, if so, are you doing a meetup? I did go to Lollapalooza last year and I had a meetup there, but I am not returning to Lollapalooza this year. Personally, it's not my favorite festival. I definitely had a great time, but comparing Lollap my Lollapalooza experience to many other festivals, I just don't have the desire to go back. I mean, it was amazing. Like, it was really fun, but the negatives about it for me were that I think that was the hottest festival I've ever attended. Like, I've been to Coachella and Bonnaroo, and the temperature has been hot but Lollapalooza felt hotter in the crowd. I literally felt like I was going to faint in the crowd of Lollapalooza um, and I was drinking so much water. So I think it was just like the amount of people in, I don't know why it was so fucking hot, but I mean, it's at like the end of July into August. Also, I felt like there was just a lot of drunk high schoolers there and I don't mean that in like an offensive way but I felt like the crowd was a lot younger less mature and I feel like when there's just a lot of like underage drinking at festivals that it's the crowd is kind of just like not as fun and it's kind of more out of control um I don't really like to drink when I go to festivals very much so if I do I'm gonna drink like earlier on in the day and not be like drinking at the festival I don't think it's the smartest thing um because you're really it's dehydrating your body a lot more so oh my god why am i out of breath talking about this right now i'm not going back to Lollapalooza. i apologize but if you are going and you've never been you're gonna have a great time just please stay hydrated for me bring like a fan or something because i'm telling you that festival was like the hottest shit i've ever attended naomi asks what's your favorite song I have this song that <laughs> I can't stop listening to ever since I heard it. I think I heard it in June and I just get down to it. It's such a good, like, fun song to bop to. It's called Broccoli. It's featuring Lil Yachty and it's by D-R-A-M. So I don't, I'm not, like, familiar with this artist, but Lil Yachty is, like, on the come up. He is coming into my life a lot lately and I'm, like, getting more into him. So, yeah, that's my favorite song right now. It's called literally Broccoli, which is kind of funny, but listen to it. It's, like, a, it's a fun song. In the description box, I always have my Spotify, what I'm listening to now, which is just my current playlist of what I'm jamming to. If you want to know what my favorite songs are. It's that playlist. Um, a lot of you guys are asking me to address um, current things going on in our world, such as Leslie just said, what are your thoughts on the recent lives lost to police brutality and the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement? And um, I definitely said essentially how I feel. I could make an entire video about this topic. It's just like absolutely like disgusting, heartbreaking, not okay. And I just, my ba my basic thoughts are like, what can all of us do to come together and actually create a change? Um, so I really want to start a discussion in the comments of this video. And if you guys, like, I just want to hear from you guys, like, what can we do to be the most effective in actually creating a change for our country? Because it is, it's not okay. And we can't just keep getting desensitized and keep hearing about these things and not getting affected. I mean, obviously we are getting affected by them, but I feel like we just can't take this anymore and how do we fucking stop this from continuing and getting 
worse. Emma says, how long had you been on YouTube before you started to see your channel grow? My channel grew a lot from being on YouTube from two years to three years on YouTube. Um, after two years, I think I had 70,000 subscribers. And then after three years, I had like 500,000 subscribers. So that's just how long it took for me. But I think now, since there is so much saturation on YouTube, so much of like people doing the same thing, you definitely have to try a lot harder, be a lot more dedicated, have higher quality everything. So just like, but that shouldn't stop you. Um, if this is what you want to do and you're passionate, definitely follow that and create content. Even if not a lot of people are watching, um, you're still affecting and like having an impact on people and that's something that's really important. I mean, it took me like a year to gain 7,000 subscribers and I watch like Jeffree Star and Jeffree Star has gained like almost 2 million subscribers in like the 7 months that he's been creating content and that's like fucking insane and so awesome. You can start from anywhere and create the most incredible thing for yourself. So just believe in yourself and like know that you fucking can do it. And it's not about the amount of subscribers that you have. Um, I haven't grown in subscribers on this channel in like a fucking year. Like I am not gaining, I'm not gaining subscribers. People unsubscribe all the time. People unsubscribe all the time from my main channel. Like I basically haven't been growing on YouTube in subscribers. Um, and I'm okay with that because like honestly, it, that was a really hard thing for me to accept. Um, when it started happening just like oh shit like I'm not growing anymore so does that mean I'm like failing at what I'm doing and failing at YouTube but um, I mean if that's how you think about it if that's how you define like success through numbers then yeah you're gonna feel like you're failing but um, I thought about it a lot more and I just thought about more to me the most important thing that I have with you guys is the connection that I have with you and the relationship that we have and how especially on this channel like you guys know me so well you guys know more about me than probably a lot of my friends like i get so personal with you guys on this channel and i fucking love you guys and i think of all of you guys as my friends and i really hope that you know that so for me i'm not a failure because i have the most amazing connection and support system and friends that I have made and that I connect with on this channel on a regular basis and it doesn't matter if a vlog gets 20,000 views or if a vlog gets 200,000 views I'm still having an impact in connecting with people all over the world about things that I care about and that you guys care about so just remember that oh I really like this question this is gonna be the last question I will answer it's from Ashley and she says at what at what point did you realize you needed to start living for you rather than living for others how would you suggest one starts living for themselves without becoming selfish wow this is a really really good question thank you for asking me this and i'm glad that i get to talk about this because this has been i feel like so prominent in my life in the past month or two um because i have felt selfish i have felt selfish um because i really have been doing nothing but putting my personal happiness first in a, like every aspect of my life and that is kind of a selfish thing but i also think that there's a difference between being selfish in the sense of like being selfish and only caring about yourself and not caring about other people's feelings and other people's lives i think that's obviously the negative way to think about selfish but selfish also can be um you putting your happiness first and that doesn't mean that other people's happiness is like fuck other people's happiness fuck like that it's only about me like that's not that's not what it means so you can look at selfish in different ways and obviously you can be selfish in a very negative way but sometimes in life you have to be selfish because think about this you guys um at the end of the day you are the only person that you have anybody that's in your life no matter how fucking close you are to them anyone that's in your life could decide to walk out of it at any point and that's a scary thing and you kind of have to i guess trust that you know your relationship with that person is strong enough that that's not gonna happen but it's really true um you're not in charge of other people and they could leave your life so you really do only have yourself. It's hard when you care so much about other people and um, 
you really do feel for them and you love the people in your life and you care about them because then it's like oh obviously their feelings are very important to you as well and I never want to fucking hurt anyone's feelings I'm a people pleaser so somebody is like upset because of me that affects me a lot I get really really I think I take things pretty offensively and I get very affected by things even sometimes when people are joking I like don't understand and I take it personally well how would I suggest one starts living for themselves without becoming selfish I think that you can live a very happy and fulfilled life for yourself with also keeping in mind other people's feelings and just being nice to everyone that comes into your life positively impacting every person you know if you are the type of person that doesn't positively impact you know everybody that you meet think about that and think about like don't you want to be the type of person that everyone talks about and they're like i just feel such like i feel good when i'm around Lindsay, or i feel good when i'm around ashley think about that and think about the type of person that you would want to be and the type of friend that you would want to have if you were going to be friends with yourself be the absolute best person that you can be uh, obviously keep other people's feelings in mind but sometimes like you're gonna not <sighs> this was the thing for me is like with like the michael thing which uh, everything is addressed in my last vlog um the thing that was hardest for me was i know that i was going to be hurting michael with making like the decision to go with what was best for me based off of my happiness and also i was thinking about his happiness like a lot um but i knew that whatever i whatever i did was going to hurt him and i didn't intend on hurting michael but sometimes you have to make decisions that are best for your happiness in your life that are going to hurt other people but this is the thing like we're all going to get hurt at some points in this life um life is hard sometimes and life is easy sometimes and life is amazing but life is very fucking hard sometimes when you're at the bottom there's no place that you can go but go up from there so we all have to crash sometimes and go through the mountain of life and this has been a 21 minute clip so i'm gonna finish up by saying that you have to be selfish sometimes but it's not in a fucked up way it's just in a way of your self is the most important thing at the end of the day and don't let people push you around it and don't not tell people how you feel because you're afraid of hurting them um that's probably the biggest lesson i've learned this summer is trust yourself trust your feelings don't hide something that you feel for two months because you're afraid to hurt someone and you're afraid to talk about it trust what you feel and it's okay to be selfish sometimes <laughs> that got really deep thank you for all of your questions i'm sorry if i couldn't get to yours i will do another q a maybe i can do a q a like weekly in the vlogs let me know if you guys would be into that if any of you even watch this far into the video <laughs> give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and tell me if you made it to this point um i'm gonna go pack now thank you guys for listening and i'll talk to you hopefully when i'm done with most of my packing hi guys it's a few hours later since i last talked to you i've been super super busy and like kind of rushing so that's why i haven't vlogged but i my camera's still on the tripod by the way from when i was doing the q a <laughs> um but i'm basically all packed up for my trip great i got ready this is what my face looks like tonight and i don't have one a lip color but i'll probably do one after the pregame okay there we go i'm um, just wearing my little shroomy choker a black bodysuit from i think it's from urban outfitters or american apparel no it's from free people <laughs> i'm wearing a skirt from free people shoes i'm gonna wear these i think people are arriving at my house so i need to leave but i'll talk to you guys later but i'm gonna leave the camera here so